like the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Let our hearts burn within us as we hear the gospel and celebrate the Eucharist. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our parish of St. Bernadette and the celebration of the third Sunday of Easter. We greet the individuals and families who are participating from home. The intentions for this Mass are for the repose of the souls of baby Giamar Rujuera Santos. We stand to receive Father Bill John and Father Tom, who preside over this Holy Mass, assisted by Deacon Jack. The hymn number is 433. happy to be here at San Bernadette. It's very good to see some familiar faces back when I was ordained and started working as Michael's in Kerry. So it's, it's nice to see you. Yes, grown like myself, but uh, some familiar faces as well. I'm Father Bill John Acosta Escobar. Uh, you can call me Father Bill John. It would be easier for you, I think. Um, I'm sorry for the ones who are really far back. I know it's not your fault. I was created like this. So if you don't see me, I hope you can still listen to me. Okay. Um, I was ordained for this diocese almost 23 years ago. I came as a seminarian uh, 27 years ago. I studied at St. Uh, St. Mary Seminary in Baltimore, Maryland. I was ordained as a deacon at St. Raphael's and then ordained as a priest at St. Andrews. Started my ministry in St. Michael's for three years, then went down to Pinehurst, Other Pines, Robbins, and Rayford for seven years, then in Kingston for three years at Holy Spirit, then vocations director for almost four years of the diocese, and then um, in St. Therese and Wilson for two years, and almost five years at St. Catherine's in Wayne Forest until I had my heart issues in, in the past 14 months. So, so I have a lot of reasons to be happy to be here. Starting my ministry once again back in a special way with all of you here at St. Bernadette. And I'll tell you a little more about that during my homily. So let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord will be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, before we celebrate these holy mysteries, let us implore God's mercy and pardon. I confess 
to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely seen in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most gravest fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and brings us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. pray. Hear us, God, our Savior, that as we rejoice and commemorate in the Virgin Blessed Bernadette, we may be instructed by her loving devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This coming Tuesday, we are celebrating our patroness, St. Bernadette. You see? Remember St. Bernadette, the little girl that is under the feet of Blessed Mother on Lourdes? Yeah? So on Tuesday, her feast, and today we are celebrating. So in a special way, I'm going to ask her that in the same way she was desperate to receive First Communion and to understand the Word of God, you will also learn it to this catechism with dedication are giving this time to you. So may the Lord, you see, enlighten your minds and your hearts like Bernadette. We open always to grow in wisdom and knowledge and love for him. Amen.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this, we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of vengeance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouths of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not only for our sins only, but for those of the whole world, that we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? And the answer, they answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards dragging the nets with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Peter, Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though they were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner, the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. And when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my fishes. Feed my lambs. Then he said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, Son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to them, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord.
My dear brothers and sisters, I begin my ministry here and with um, three important things that are happening right now. The first one is we celebrate our Patron's Day, St. Bernadette, which is coming up this Tuesday, but we're celebrating it today. The second thing is, yes, I'm very happy to be back into ministry actively after what was going on with my life. And the third thing is all this in, in between or in the midst, yes, of our Easter celebration in which we contemplate every year the mystery of Easter, Jesus' crucifixion, and mainly Jesus' resurrection. So those three things mark the beginning of my ministry here at San Bernardo. And I'm very happy once again for all of that. Almost a month ago, I was in Lourdes. See, it was, uh, since the January, I was doing a sabbatical program in Rome as part of my recovery. And last month, I, one weekend, see, I went to Lourdes to fulfill a promise that um, Lourdes and ours, ours is where the Basilica of San John Maria Vianney, the patron of the priest, is. So one of the Colombian priests who are, is a friend of mine since we were seminarians, but works in L'Aquila next to, to, to Rome, he did make a promise that if I will recover from my issues, he will take me down back to ours. So we were fulfilling that. And in between, I say, we got to go to Lourdes because I promised this also to our Blessed Mother. So a month ago, I was there, actually on March 16. On Tuesday, it would be exactly a month. I went to Lourdes and, of course, prayed over there, drank again of the water there, and prayed to St. Bernadette as well. Then five days later, I got the call from the bishop. I need you back on April 15, and you are going to San Bernadette and Fico y Guarina. It's amazing. Because San Bernadette is the patroness of the ill, especially those who are physically ill. San Bernadette, the most beautiful girl who was always pure and innocent, not only of her heart, but also of her mind. She was from France, yes, very poor family. No instruction, even though she was born on the rising up the, of the illustration time in France. She didn't have any education. In fact, they were so poor that the family had to move in into an abandoned prison that was abandoned because it was not healthy for the prisoners. But the family was there, living there. And that's where she grew up, in a cell. No instructions at all. No education. The only education she was having was being trained to receive First Holy Communion. And that was his deepest desire, to the point that the family had to move from that little town to Lourdes to receive the instruction. And she had to deal with an issue because she spoke no French. She spoke Patois. And if she didn't learn the, the prayers in French, she was not ready to make First Communion, and she was in anguish. Finally, she did. But it's an important and beautiful image that in this age of the illustration in which they were so educated, we have this little country girl with no education, but with a pure heart and pure mind that she was able to see the wonders and the wisdom of God. She was able to see the image of our Blessed Mother. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that how the Lord's work? She trusted so much in what she was experiencing that even when our Blessed Mother asked her to go to a particular place in which she will find a spring of water, she had to drink from it. 
She didn't find any big spring. She just found some kind of little thing, mighty things. And our blessed mother asked her to dream from that. She doubted, of course, a lot. But at the end, she did. She did. Drinking from the water, coming out of the dirt, but a water that was completely also pure and that provided to her different eyes. She was full with courage and love for God and for our Blessed Mother that she risked everything. It's very interesting because when the doctors came to check on her, when the major came to threaten her, say, you shouldn't say these things. You are not seeing anyone special. You are nothing. She remained faithful to what she was experiencing. And when they threatened her, if you still continue saying those things, we will take you to prison. She laughed. I grew up in a prison. Very powerful. And very powerful that one of the first convert people was precisely doctors who went to check on her and started helping her by taking care of those who were ill coming and walking for so many hours to drink of that water as well. Pope Benedict and many of his homilies explained that this water, this image of the water, is precisely an image of the truth, the truth that is not contaminated. And the example in the heart of Bernard Day is an example for us. We must aspire like her to grow up and to have no stain in our heart. To seek for that truth that is not contaminated. And nowadays it's also become once again relevant. We all want to know what's going on in the world, what's going on with our lives. We want to know the truth. Yes, we have to look for that pure water and drink from it. There are many options, but there is only one truth and one pure water. But we have to aspire for it. And this is the example. You see, we have to aspire for it. My brothers and sisters, you see, I was telling you also that the second thing was um, you probably don't remember who you were praying for last year in November, not last year, but on 2022. But the whole diocese was praying for me. And some of you were praying for me. I was at St. Catherine's, and then I have uh, three heart attacks in 10 days. So I was in coma, five surgeries on my stomach, a lot of hemorrhage. They were preparing my funeral twice. You see? And it's not, I'm not kidding, it's true. And in one of those moments of experiences that I have of a struggle is precisely a feeling lost and falling from a, from a building and trying to pray, and I couldn't pray the Our Father or the Holy Mary. I could not remember them. I started, but I could not, and I feel this struggle. And I ask our blessed mother, please help me, because I don't know what's going on. And she did. And on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, I woke up from my coma. And once again, the doctor saw that I needed two years for my process of recovering, that I may walk in two years. I start walking in three months. And it because, um, yeah, the prayers of people, they work. Man, I was in great hands at Duke. Great hands. But in, on two occasions, they lose completely hope my recovering. The bishop and my family say, no, keep trying, keep practicing on him. And they yes, they did. And it worked as well. 
And that's why I'm saying I'm very so happy to be back because this is my first parish again. I was supposed to wait until November. Those fulfilling those two years of medical leave. And hopefully one of the other diagnosis was that I was going to be crazy, maybe need uh, many or a lot of stuff, but so far nothing of that has happening. And if I go crazy on these days, then you let me know. Okay. <laughs> but it's important, as I say, and it's important that I start here at St. Bernadette. It's important, you see, that I, that I acknowledge that it was through your prayers and through the love for Blessed Mother, whom I'm trusting so much in my life in those moments, in which I, that was the only thing that I feel so scared. And now I am back here into ministry, into the diocese that I was ordained for, the territory that I love very much. And all of this is, it, it is within the midst of the Eastern mystery, because it is within the Eastern mystery that we are reminded that yes, our lives are a gift. And I myself know that three times. Deacon was reading the gospel that it was not for this Sunday, but he spoke about Peter. Jesus asking Peter three times. And I somehow feel related. Three heart attacks. It's, it's, it's very important. We, our lives are a gift. But with the Easter celebration, we recognize that yes, we are called and loved by God to be born into this world. But with the resurrection, we understand that we are called to be reborn for eternity. And this is what we celebrate in Easter. We are called to be reborn for eternity, which is a higher gift. Yes, it's still a mystery, but it's a higher gift. And that's why we like St. Bernard that we have to aspire for those things. And we pray, and we should pray every day, Lord, clean my heart. My mind, make it pure. Remove any stain of bad thinking, bad influence, or bad ideologies. Many of these things that keep us somehow attached to this world and block our sight to look into heaven with hope and with joy. Okay? And we ask, you see, the Lord during this Easter season to help us, yes, to continue the rest of this Easter season and look forward to the celebration of Pentecost in which we hope and we hope that the Lord will raise up always our hearts and our minds to a higher level of understanding and knowing the truth. Because we do want to continue drinking of that pure water that St. Bernadette was drinking. That our faith will become stronger and stronger that when we come here to the breaking of the bread, okay, which is the gospel today, we recognize and acknowledge that the Lord made himself present physically, soul, divinity, and body in our midst to continue nourishing us making us stronger, united, not only within our hearts, you see, for our soul, but as a community. And that's why I invite you to be proud of who you are in this beautiful parish, under a wonderful patronage of St. Bernard did, in a special way under the protection of Blessed Mother of Lourdes, even though I was thinking of Guadalupe when I was praying during my coma. But it's the same, Mother. May the Lord bless you and bless the beginning of my ministry here. And as we continue being the family that the Lord God helps us to be here, we will continue growing as we hope in faith, in hope, in joy, in love. May the Lord bless you always. And you know that you come with my prayers because I owe my life to many of you who are praying throughout the diocese. And I hope I can be the instrument that the Lord wants me to be here. And for that, I ask you to continue praying for me and for Father Tom also, who 
the sacramental ministry here for our deacons and for all the people that work and made this a place, a wonderful place for your kids. We will continue praying so we can find a music director as well. He helps a lot. I know I love Wayne because we, he, he saw me growing in St. Michael's. See? We do have a nice volunteers. And we need to make this parish the best parish. I know the bishop like to say that. He said, he's in the best diocese. I want to be in the best parish. You see? But it is our responsibility. And we know we will do it because we love this place. This is our home. And even if we're threatened outside, we know that we can come and get the peace, get the peace that we will always be looking for. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God the Father of man, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, through God from begotten, no man, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and it seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus was made known in the breaking of the bread. Our minds and hearts are open as we pray. Let the church be ever thankful for the gifts of the earth and the graces that flow from the real presence of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders revere the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the unemployed and the underemployed be comforted by God, who knows all needs and the longings of their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in prison of isolation be welcomed and comforted by the hospitality of loving community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this congregation, united in love and service, be perfected in the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, let us present God personal needs and intentions. We remember our relatives, friends, benefactors of the parish, or those who have requested our prayers, especially those who are ill, those who are falling into additions, depression, that through the intercession of St. Bernadette and our Blessed Mother, may the Lord grant them as in recovering, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We also pray for all relatives, friends, benefactors of the parish, who have passed away. In a special way for a baby, Yomar Figueroa Santos, may the Lord grant them eternal peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hear us, stewards of these Easter mysteries. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus, our resurrected Lord. Amen. 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 Pray, my brothers and sisters, that these my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin Blessed Bernadette, we humbly implore your Majesty 
that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cults before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you your praise. For to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and made them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bernadette, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Luis Rafael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we there to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gradually grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not the but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renew by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of Blessed Bernadette, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Passionate discipleship is a Bible study focused on equipping women to know Christ and to make him known. Throughout the Bible study, we will study 2 Timothy verse by verse. And as we immerse ourselves in Paul's last and deeply personal letter to his beloved friend and mentor, mentor, Timothy. The Bible study will start on Thursday evenings from 7 to 8.30 p.m. in classroom number two. You can register for the class in Rome, and the cost of the class is $20. The seven-week study will start on April 18th and conclude on May 30th. And for more information, please see the bulletin. The migrant ministry is asking for volunteers to bring them to bring farm workers to Sunday Mass, and it is collecting men's clothing for the workers. Please check the bulletin for further information or contact social outreach, Gloria Ascona. And the people from Jerusalem with the wooden carvings is outside in the gathering hall. Thank you. Before I do the final blessing, I would like to thank Father Tom for all his uh, uh, help during this uh, time of transition. So I always have good memories of him because he was uh, a key person to buy my first car <laughs> when I came here. So, so um, for the priest of our generations, yeah, we always run to him for advice and for help. So yeah, too. he made us happy back then. So, <laughs> uh -huh, but thank you. I also would like to introduce to you two new seminarians who also just came from Colombia uh, a week ago, avancen un poquito acá para que los vean, por favor. So, Nicolás, raise your hand, levanta la mano, por favor. Eso. Y Jason, okay, very good. So, they're still looking like scared, huh? <laughs> They will be studying English at White Tech. Uh, Jason is going to stay with us for a year, and Nicolás is going to be living at the cathedral with Monsignor uh, Brockman. So, um, include them in your prayers. You will start seeing their faces in the poster, the new poster that normally comes in October. Okay. Uh, hopefully, we'll get another two more people. So, 
So um, please continue praying for vocations. One of uh, the biggest see, desires always when I go to a parish is that also we will have our own vocation from the parishes. So that's, uh, I see some younger guys who all start making my list, you see, <laughs> here at San Bernadette. Let us entrust our families to the protection and intercession of Blessed Mother, especially the advocation of Lourdes, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Bernadette, pray for us. O holy men and women, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace with Christ. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God.